Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, graph an equation um, or graph a function, a rational function. And when we're doing rational functions, there's a couple things we want to make sure we identify. First of all, we want to make sure we identify the horizontal asymptotes and the vertical asymptotes. Forget about everything else. Let's just identify the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So I always like to start with um, the vertical asymptotes because I think that's the um, easiest way to kind of get started. Now remember, the vertical asymptotes are simply going to be the values where our denominator is um, undefined. Oh, I'm sorry, where our value equal to 0. Because when our denominator is equal to 0, our function is undefined, creating our asymptote. So to find our vertical asymptotes, all we simply need to do is take our whatever's in our denominator and set it equal to 0. So to do that, um, I can use this. I can either factor it, or I can use the square root method. In this case, I'll use the square root method equals 9, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 3. Please make sure when you're applying the square root method that you include plus or minus. right? When you introduce the square root, you have to take the positive negative. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we also could have factored this into a difference of two squares. right? So now you can see that, oh, it's negative 3 and 3. Yes, they're both solutions. So we have to make sure we include them. Okay. So now we found the vertical asymptotes. And I like pretty much just go to that automatically first. The next thing we'd want to do is look to see if we can simplify our numerator um, and our denominator, where we might be able to um, simplify our function and determine if there's any holes. Well, we can't, really sim we can't simplify um, our numerator anymore. That's going to determine any holes. So the next thing we want to do is determine the horizontal asymptote. Now, when determining the horizontal asymptote, there's the rules. right? And I kind of wrote out the rules up here just so you can kind of see them, but I'll kind of go through them again. What we're basically doing when we're looking at the rules is looking at the degrees of the two functions when we're dealing with rational functions. We look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Remember, the degree is going to be the largest exponent of each polynomial. So you can see that the degrees are both x2, um, x squared and x squared, right? So their degrees are the same. Now, Therefore, you can say this says if the degree, and you can see a of x equals ba. So the degrees are equal for the numerator and the denominator, which I guess I should write an equation. There you go. So the degrees are exactly the same. Therefore, we need to, we need to look at the LC, which is the leading coefficient of the polynomial for a of x, divided by the leading coefficient of my polynomial for b of x. So that's what I mean. So to find the horizontal asymptote, oh, I'm sorry, that should be y equals. So therefore, y equals the leading coefficient of a of x. So the leading coefficient here is 4 over the leading coefficient for this polynomial, which is just 1. Remember, the leading coefficient is the coefficient of your term with the highest degree. So I have 4 and 1. Well, obviously, that just equals 4. So now what I have is I have two, uh, two vertical asymptotes and a horizontal asymptote. So let's go ahead and graph this here. So my vertical asymptotes are at negative 3 and positive 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. OK, now. When trying to identify, oh, and that vertical asymptote is at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, so when trying to identify you know, what is the shape of the graph going to look like, um, the best thing that I like to do is obviously use graphing technology, right? I mean, that's why we have it. Use a computer system, Google, whatever. Um, but it is important for you to at least understand, you know, <clears throat> how we can do this manually without having to use that software. And um, I think the best is using a table function in you know, some kind of computer software. But what I'm about to do is not going to be anything that's uh, over strenuous on your brain. I just want to kind of pick some points. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose some values to plug in. And what I simply do when I'm using my value, so I have uh, x and f of x, is I simply want to pick two points to the left and to the right of, oops, two points to the left and to the right of each asymptote. So I here have here negative 3, right? And we know negative 3 is, a, um, is an asymptote, so it's undefined. Then we also have positive 3, which is undefined. 
So I'm not, I don't want to do anything crazy. I'm just going to pick the points that are right next to it, right? Um, so to the left, I'll just do negative 4, negative 5. Here, I'll do positive 4, positive 5. And then here, I'll do, how about we do um, 0 and 1. Make it very, very simple, right? Um, so now, let's just you know, plug in each one of those values. Now, you can plug them into your calculator, do them else. Um, but basically, what you're doing is you're evaluating for each one of these points. So let's do negative 5. So I'm, not, I'm going to start doing these mostly in my head. But let's just pretend. Now notice, when I plug in negative 5, that's the same thing as positive 5 because I'm squaring both of them. So once I do negative 5 and negative 4, I have the answers for 5 and 4 as well. So negative 5 is 4 times negative 5 squared divided by negative 5 squared minus 9. So 5 squared, uh, negative 5 squared is um, 25. 4 times 25 equals 100. Um, and then that's 25 minus 9, which is going to be 16. Now, 100 divided by 16, I don't know what that is. And I don't want to estimate here, so I'll just do 100 divided by 16 is 6.25 or 25 over 4. Okay. So at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I can go up to 6.4 or 6.25. So 4, 5, 6, 7. So I could say it's somewhere right around there. right? Then let's do negative 4. And I'll just do these first two, and then I'll do the rest in my head. So negative 4 is 4 times negative 4 squared divided by negative 4 squared minus 9. So negative 4 squared is 16. Um, 16 times 4 is going to be 64. Then I have 16 minus 9 is 7. So again, we're going to have to get the div division on this. Ooh, 9.14. And that is the reduced fraction. Uh, so we'll just round it to 9.1. Um, so that's 64 over 7. So therefore, at negative 4, 1, 1, 2, 3. Oh, shoot. Sorry about that. That was at negative 5 was right there. Then at uh, negative 4 is 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now remember, these graphs, they have to approach the asymptotes, right? That's why we have asymptotes. They're lines that graphs approach. So my graph, this asymptote is going to continue indefinitely. Well, it has to approach it there. And then it has to approach this one, where it's not going to cross it back over. Then we know that these two points, 4 and 5, so 4 goes up to 9, and 5 goes up to um, 6.25. So therefore, this graph is going to look the same. Now, all we simply need to do is figure out these two. So to do that, I'm going to use these in my head. If I just put 0 squared, um, 0 squared times 4 is 0. And then 0 squared minus 9, so I have 0 over 9, which is just 0. So therefore, I have a point here. And then I'll do 1. Uh, 1 squared. Now remember, I can do 1 and negative 1, right? Because they actually have an axis of symmetry um, over here. So when I do 1, I get 1 times uh, 1 squared times 4 is 4. 1 squared uh, minus 9 is negative 8. So I have 4 over 1 minus 9 is negative 8, which is equal to a negative 1 half. So over 1, I'm at negative 1 half. Positive 1, I'm at negative 1 half. And then again, remember, this has to approach my asymptotes. Well, it looks like it's going to look something like this. And if you go ahead and graph this on graphing technology, you will notice that the graph is going to have the exact same um, shape as that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a uh, rational function. Thanks.